Downtown Chicago as the sun sets. That's the backdrop here for the O'Reilly Auto Parts Route 66 Nationals in the home of today's Jags All-Stars for the 29th time as the finals roll to the starting line. We start handing out some big time checks to the sportsman racers who come from all over the great United States of America. And we begin with our stock finalist, Jeg Coughlin. His family, the man that makes all of this happen, joins Alan and I in the booth. And we're watching Slate Cummings get set to take on Brad Burton right now. Slate Cummings with that opportunity to double. But Brad Burton, a two-time world champion in the Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series. He's never been to the All-Stars before. And everybody will tell you, as a sportsman racer, your resume is not complete if you don't have an All-Stars title. Slate's pretty tough, though. Yeah, very tough. As you mentioned, uh, he's got a shot to win two eliminators today. Uh, which will be a first for the Jags All-Stars. They're bumping in here for the final round. It's going to be a good good go. Just over half a second head start goes to the Red Pontiac. And here comes the Corvette. Good start for Cummings. He's going to try and chase down uh, Brad here. In the world last year, they were number one and number oh, three. Oh, he's halfway home. Yes. Slate Cummings gets How about it. that? Gets the, gets the first one at 10.48 after predicting and dialing in at 10.47. Pretty solid run out there. 12 on the tree. 10.97. Brad Burton got there first, but he ran under to do it. Well, among the biggest news we got this weekend is the fact that Jeg's folks have decided to extend this great race for another three years. Jeg, what is it about this race that just gets you and your family so fired up? Uh, we, uh, we've we always enjoyed it. Uh, you know, from the first race that uh, we can recall from Beach Bend Raceway down in Kentucky, 1985, and, uh, you know, just wanting to participate in in the TRW All-Stars at the time was, uh, was a a, a goal and a dream to come true and uh, we were able to do that I was able to do it my brothers were able to and uh, and now our company's uh, title writing which is uh, fantastic and Jeg has actually won this event it's not just an individual event it is a team event and coming into the final round that's the way they stood division three which just happens to be Jeg's home team is beating everybody right now and in that last run Slate Cummings came in as a blocker so the points don't change when a blocker wins we could lock it up right here, Dave Reed. That's because James Monroe represents Division Three, set to take on Phil Unruh right here in our top dragster final, one of the new exciting categories. Both of these guys, division champions. That's a great thing about the All-Stars. People come over from all over the country, go head-to-head, -head, that maybe would never have another opportunity to race each other. Championship on the line if James Monroe can light up a scoreboard. It's going to be a very close spot. Again, handicap racing, but only 200 difference. Look at the wheel stand out of James's car. Looks like That'll do it. Dead on the dial. As they say, both drivers. 643 Monroe predicted 643 and nailed it. Phil Unruh predicted 645, nailed it. Reaction time was the difference. James Monroe reacted quicker to the green light. And Jeggy, that's something you've been known for your whole career. Yeah, you got a great start there. Look at the wheels up charge. Uh, you know, Killer James has uh, lived up to just that. Uh, he's been Division Three champ several times and bringing home another All-Stars win. And by my math, that's going to lock it up. Division yep, Three division will three. take home the team trophy, even though there are still individual trophies yet to be awarded. Well, Lewis Bloom's not going to like to hear this, but that's their seventh win as a team. That happens tied Division One for the most ever. Not happy about not that. Not happy about that at all. <laughs> Stat guys had a rough day today, but James Monroe didn't. He just took home a $5,000 payday. Cinched it up for Division Three. How about that? Well, now we're going to go back to the starting line where Sherman Adcock Jr. and Michael Shelton come to the line. It's our Super Cup final. Sherman actually came in here, double entered as well. He qualified for the All-Stars in both Super Comp and Super Gas. Didn't have a whole lot of good fortune in his Super Gas car, but if they can close the deal in this machine, it'll still make the trip from Atlanta worthwhile. Yeah, Sherman's uh, just been the picture of consistency for as long as I can remember, 25 years worth in Super Comp, Super Gas from the Georgia area. And it's going to give uh, Michael a, a good run here in the final. And Michael's our uh, local Division Three champion from last year and it's been very, very solid. You saw that number 31 on the scoop. That designates Division Three champion. We just saw a Division Three champion win in top dragster. Well, this could have been meaningful as it's a three and two matchup. So Sherman Adcock representing Division Two would like to get a little revenge here for nothing else himself. And did he get it? Yes, he did. Double breakout this time. But Michael Shelton, 888. He's under by 200. Sherman Adcock, 889. He's under by 100. Or Thou, if you want to get technical. Double breakout. The closer is Sherman Adcock. He gets the win, and John Kernan's hanging out with one of the winners. 
absolutely. And with uh, James Monroe and wrapping it up for Division Three, James, describe to us what this means to you. Well, this is a big deal for sportsman racers, and I really appreciate Jegs for putting this on and the whole Coughlin family for doing this. Uh, this is the third year in a row, and I, I feel the, the bitter disappointment that gentleman had driving off last year. So it's nice to get that win this year. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Look at that trophy for me. Yeah. But well, now we yeah. turn our attention to the comp final. Guaranteed first time Jegs winner here. Will it be Greg Campaign or Mike De Palma? Mike De Palma in from the West Coast. He's been here three of the last four years. Been to a final, but hasn't closed the deal. Now that's a V6 under the hood of the Trans Am, a V8 dragster. No break out here. First one to the finish line. And Campaign like didn't move. Broke. So give it to Mike De Palma. And I notice every one of these categories, it seems like they come up, Jake. You've won a national event in them. <laughs> Well, we've, uh, I did run Comp Eliminator in 1997, had, uh, had great fortune, won the Atlanta race and uh, finished number two in the points by, uh, I think, one round. Check this out, the V6 car all the way in from Phoenix. Watch the wheel stand for the V6 Firebird as he's flying out of the screen, and this is a bit, little bit better angle. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Greg there, almost like it lost fire, and, you know, he might have, uh, if he could have got, got down the racetrack, uh, Mike was a little tardy on the light, but... We'll never know. Well, the 1090 category, the Jegs All-Stars for Super Street. We're talking Casey Grubb looking for his first win. Going up against a guy, though, looking for his third Jegs All-Star win. He's also the defending event champion. His name's Ricky Schick. Yeah, Casey, I uh, was hanging out with a lot of the Division One crowd on Thursday night, and they were hyped up for this event. And he's uh, got a little lead off the start line. We'll see what happens. Both of them dump at the finish line, and Casey Grubb is going to close the deal. 10.904 on the 10.90. 10.92 for Ricky Ship, and I think one thing we hadn't mentioned, seven geographic division send teams. Last year's winner gets an invitation to come back as a blocker. So for Casey Grubb, he is going to be back next year as a blocker. Let's check in once again with John Kernan. And with Mike DePalma, a big win there. But, uh, you know, did you know you'd won it right away? No, I hadn't. I, uh, I couldn't see the wind light because of the way the sun was, so I just heard it on the radio. So what went through your mind then? Oh, just excited. I mean, it's been a great weekend. We've we've been running good. i got to thank my family, Craig Eaton, Diane Eaton, for their support. Um, I want to dedicate this to Craig's uh, mother. She's fighting, fighting some uh, problems in the hospital, so this one's for you, Eileen. Um, Rick Waters, uh, Richard Freeman with Elite Sports, Mickey Thompson Tires, just been awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Got another guaranteed first-time winner here in our top sportsman final. Jeffrey Barker takes on John Scally Jr. Another Division Three champion, John Scally over here on the left side. Top sportsman is fast door cars bracket race and handicap head star to go to John and then the Georgia car dealer will see if he can catch him. You haven't won in top sportsman, have you, Jake? Is that one that missed your resume? I have not. He's two got a two good green light starts, double O's a pair. Now we'll find out who's got the better dial. Double breakout's going to go to Scally, 06 on an 07. He's under by one, hun, 64 on a 67. Jeff Barker under by three, hun, on the double foul, the lesser of two evils. John Scally, another Division Three champ, another Jags All-Stars champ, just like you planned it. These cars are fun to watch. Man, they are, they are wicked fast. They are. Talked about the fact both drivers almost perfect on the Christmas tree. It was just a matter of who made the right choice at the strike. And sometimes in bracket racing, the right choice is to cut your opponent loose down at the other end. John Kernan. Down here with Casey Grubb picking up a big check, $4,500 for Super Street. And just how big an event is this for you, sportsman racers? This is this is huge because this is the best of the best from, from all around the U.S. and Canada. And I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. I'm just honored to be here, and this is fantastic. I mean, thanks to my folks, my buddies at Word Racing, and my wife and my kid, and, you know, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. Great. Thank you very much. In fact, we've got 30 Unreal. states, two Canadian provinces Unreal. representing the 80 drivers that came to settle the, who would get the biggest check? The Jags All-Stars. That'll bring us to Super Gas, the 990 category. We talked about all the different classes that Jake has won in. Your first world championship in NHRA came in Super Gas. It was, uh, and we've got a marquee match up here in the final. Kevin Moore's been hot, uh, really, in all of 2000s. Mike Sawyer doubled up last week in Epping, New Hampshire, and uh, is certainly looking for uh, the Jigs All-Star win today. Kevin Moore actually came in, broke the motor on Thursday in practice runs. They stayed up all night Thursday getting it back together, trying to make it pay off. Well, they're bumping in, taking their time, 
Got to be near perfect here in the, in the final round. Is this a time when you try to enjoy the moment or are you so focused on business at hand you don't think about it? You are so focused. Look at Mike, turned it red. Three thousandths of a second. He fouled out and Kevin Moore, who had a crazy weekend, is going to leave as Jegs All-Stars champ. The 988, the breakout is overlooked because the foul start decided it. And then Mike, dead on two. That'll get you talking to yourself all the way back to Massachusetts. So now here comes the big moment in our super stock final because Slade Cummings has the opportunity to become the first man ever in the 29 year history now of the Jags All-Stars to double up. Problem is he's got Mike Crutchfield in the other lane. Mike's very tough and uh, but Slate also known as the golden child as uh, no stranger to the Jags All-Star winner circle. There's not many people have more fun than those Cajuns are <laughs> they another one of your events the Jags Sports Nationals yep. down at No Problem Raceway in Louisiana and those boys have got a heck of a reputation down there. They sure do. Uh, they're a great family and uh, you know Mike those, these two, uh, I'm sure, crossed paths many times throughout the season. Mike Crutchfield back in 1990 won the Jags All-Stars when he beat Greg Stanfield on that day. Races Pro Stock with you now. Pretty even on the reaction timer. Not a whole lot of difference in dial either. Good heads up side by side run. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Slate Cummings misses the double by three thousandths, thousandths of a second. 905, Mike Crutchfield is going to take home yet another All-Stars trophy. And you know, Slate will have a chance to come back and try it again. Both drivers very good on the Christmas tree. Jackie, this is one of the calling cards of Superstock. The wheels up, fun from the saddle. I'll tell you what, when you defy the law of gravity and that thing is just floating out there accelerating, there's almost no finer feeling. A couple of pretty big time racers going head to head and doing it like we expect them to. Eight thousandths was the margin at the finish line. That means up next will be top alcohol dragsters and funny cars that race on the regional level. New deal there. Speaking of big time matchups, Bill Reichert, Chris Demke. Now this run will not count for qualifying. Bill Reichert has already failed to qualify for the Route 66 Nationals. Oh, wow. but did he just win? Yes, yes he, he did. did. 531 to a 532, and Bill Reichert salvaged something for the weekend. It'll be his first DNQ since the World Finals in 2002. Wow. But he gets out of here with another All Star trophy. Chris Denke, who won it all last year, comes up about 12,000 short. That's just a great drag race. If you look at them at the 1,000 foot mark, they are glued together. And at the finish line, they're not too far apart. Well, the on-track intervals will show you that Chris Demke had taken over the lead by the 60-foot mark, but at the finish line, Reichert stripes by. And goodness for electronics. What a drag race. Right. Well, we wrap it up with another first-time Jags All-Star winner. Will it be Dale Brand or will it be Todd Venny? Todd, a second-generation racer whose father's Ken. Jack Coughlin in the booth with us, second-generation racer whose father is Jack Sr. Yeah, Remember back to Englishtown, 1976, the Pro Cop final? Your dad's racing? Yep. It was Ken on that day. Did Todd just do it, or is it Dale? Boy, wow! Close. Dale Brand by the narrowest just of margins. Todd Venny got off the starting line first, a superior reaction time, but Dale Brand just did have enough to track him down, and the Iowa runner will add Jeg's All-Star champion to his resume. Let's take a look at former Jeg's All-Stars winners that are current NHRA drivers, and they are stars. Names like Jeg Coughlin. Morgan, Morgan Lucas, Lucas and Sean Langdon, Spencer Massey. You know, we always talk about the Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series and specifically this great event is just sort of paving the way. So as you look at some of the uh, Lucas Oil stars and guys we saw in today's checks, who do you like to maybe join that list, move up to the pro ranks? You know, there's, uh, there's so many, so much talent in the Lucas Oil Series. I think we could see, uh, you know, I know Mike, Mike De Palma would love to uh, run in pro stock. That's always been a, a goal of his, and he'd be fantastic at it. Uh, any any one of the Cummings brothers could could certainly shine. Look at uh, Todd Vinny there in the final. Had a great yep. reaction time. Just got tracked down. But uh, there, there's probably too many to name. Jackie, thanks for all that your family does. My pleasure. It's Thank been you. great spending time with you today. As the Jaggers All Stars come to a close with Division Three taking home the team title as well as all the other winners. Congratulations to you. We come back to Route 66 Raceway. It will be semifinal time for the national event, the O'Reilly Auto Parts Route 66 Nationals.